Hello everybody, welcome back. It's me. I'm here. Back at it again with some more Darksiders. Uh, let's finish up this temple, maybe. I don't think I'll finish up this temple, actually. That's a lie. Um, but, you know, let, let, let's make some progress. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I've been thinking a lot about pizza. really like pizza. Pizza's very tasty, as we know. Uh, except if you're lactose intolerant, and you don't. Or you do, and you just deal. <laughs> But, um, you know, there, there, there are quite a few fast food pizza joints out here in this world. I'd like, if you wish, uh, leave for me in the comments what your favorite pizza joint is, fast food-wise at least. Because if it's just like, you know, just some Italian guy's name, then, you know, that's not very, very much going to help me. <laughs> Like, fast food pizza-wise, I'd have to say, and this is kind of weird, this is going to be kind of strange, but my favorite fast food pizza is probably Little Caesars. <laughs> you wouldn't think so with how much I like food. However, Little Caesars pizza is kind of a different breed. Just a little bit, a different breed. <laughs> Like, I, I don't know what they changed about it in the past couple of years, but it's straight bussin'. <laughs> it is straight up schmackin', and I have, I have no idea why it is, it's so jumpin'. I'm talking, like, I'm talking leaving. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy good pizza. Like, at first, it used to be like, yeah, sure, this pizza's worth five dollars. And it was decent then, but like, literally like, you have to eat it as soon as you get it. You had to eat it as soon as you get it, or it would just be like, the worst, soggiest pizza you've ever had in your life two minutes later. Now, you go get the like, hot and ready pizza, right? And it's like, one, them joints always be schmacking. They, they are like, I swear it's a different kind of, like, something different is doing, they're doing something new with the dough. It's like very chewy, it's like a very quality, it's like a very quality pizza dough. It's everything you would want. Did I just do 8,000 damage? Did you guys see that? I'm not tripping, right? Or, or, or was that just like, like an 86 and a 66, like, lined up together? And they just like, <laughs> and it just like, went weird. You know? Anyway, like the dough's really good on Little Caesar's Pizza. It tastes very nice. The pizza still, like, is worse cold, but it reheats perfectly in the microwave. Like, I mean, like, I, I'm not, I don't mean that as just like a thing that I'm saying. Like, I mean, it reheats perfectly in the microwave. You throw any piece of cold Little Caesars pizza in the microwave for 30 seconds, I assure you, freaking try this, because I need to know if this is just like a just like a Little Caesars by my house thing. But like, 30 seconds in the microwave, it could go from, I'm talking ice cold. Like, like fresh out of the fridge, because you wanted to preserve the pizza because it was unnecessarily good for Little Caesars pizza. Fresh out the fridge, and it could be just like, it's 30 seconds in the microwave and it's nuts. It's it's back to hot and ready. It's back to hot and ready status. 30 seconds in the microwave. Any any time, 30 seconds is all it takes. Oh no. Oh no. I hate these guys. <laughs> like, let me just let them duke it out for me. Can, I, can we, like, team up? <laughs> like, you don't gotta fight me, right? We could just fight... We could just fight the constructs together. You know what I mean? He's got constructs to deal with, so, like, I'm, I'm profiting. This is profit for me. Finishing move. Nuts. Other fast food pizzas are alright. Pizza Hut is okay, I guess. 
Papa John's is alright. I ate way too much freaking Papa John's pizza during concert week because that's all they give you. <laughs> Literally, like, uh, you're not gonna be home in time for, like, a regular time dinner, so here's Papa John's pizza for the fourth time this week. And then, so Mr. Ford, the, the choir director, started doing, like, Subway sandwiches on concert night, <laughs> just to, just to get some some new flavors in there. You know? So you're not eating freaking Papa John's pizza. You used to eat Pepe's pizza, but uh, apparently it's cheaper to get Papa John's now. And 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 my school is like tax exempt from Papa John's or something, something silly like that. I don't know. But Papa John's is all right. It's okay pizza. When it's hot, it's good. When it's cold, it's bad. It doesn't reheat well. Skeleton key, baby. Oh, it, they're actually called skeleton keys. I... I was just saying that. <laughs> I was just saying that as a thing to say. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm serious, bro. Little Caesars is... is Probably the new wave of fast food pizza. I think it's the best one. Like I don't think it will ever be beaten. Like it's 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 here to stay. That's my opinion on Little Caesars Pizza. Another thing I, I've been doing recently, I um, wrote a paper in history, which was nice. It was it was like a five-page paper, and this is like. This is really weird. This is a really weird thing about the class, right? Uh, the entire first quarter, literally the only homework we had, we had like four assignments total. Two of them were the summer work that we did over the summer. But like, one of them was, uh, you gotta... <laughs> hey, okay, I'd say it's more like six, right? Two for the summer work, two research things... We were researching like uh, the like interaction between Amer like uh, Native Americans, like one particular tribe, and uh, the Europeans who came over, and just like what was the most impactful thing that happened to them over the course of the Europeans being there. I thought we had to write like an essay or something. I was prepared to write like a five paragraph essay at least. Um. He wanted us to do all of that research. I'm talking two months of research for one paragraph. Just for the purpose of like, yeah, sure, we'll, we're, we're going to do this paragraph and we're going to do all of this research to get you ready for writing a paragraph. So I'm like, okay, cool. That's neat. That's neat. It's cool. Whatever. Fast forward to the next quarter. Uh... He's like, all right, we're going to do another research writing, and this time it's going to be five to seven pages. He just drops it in class. Like, we're, like, like that's not a drastic increase <laughs> from a paragraph to writing a five to seven page paper. <laughs> a paragraph that didn't even have to fill up a whole page. Didn't even have to fill up a whole page. It could have. Didn't have to, though. And now, five to seven page paper. Anyway, the topic of that five to seven page paper was, ooh, look at that, that's some swag, actually, was um, we pick someone, one person, from the uh, reformer period, and, and we gotta investigate their life. So, like, what did they do, what did they impact, what were their core beliefs, and the paper was like, what did this person believe, how do you explain it to someone in the modern time? cool sure it's not like and it wasn't even like the prospect wasn't even just like I, I i can't write a five to seven page paper i've just like like this is not proper scaling like you, you've skipped a few steps here but i i had a decent amount of fun writing that paper i got dealt the short end of the stick let's say um i am the only black kid in that class not the only kid of like like of a minority but the only black kid in that class. Um, 
I got stuck with the pro-slavery anti-women guy. Whoa! <laughs> His name is George Fitzhugh. And let me just say, he was a very interesting individual. The whole pro-slavery anti-women thing was very oddly structured. Like, his belief system was really weird. First off, he was like... He was like one of the first conservatives. Like, his defense of slavery was a lot of like, This is the way things are! This is how it's supposed to be! Kind of stuff, right? So, like, you've got that. And then, he gets into like... Slavery in the abstract, which is a weird statement when you first hear it, right? Because, like, it, well, how can slavery be abstract exactly, you know what I mean? What he, what he believed was not that slavery was an institution that was necessary. He believed that sl slavery was necessary for the survival of the United States. Because that's the way that things are, that's the way that they should be, in his mind, right? He didn't believe that it was just because, like, black people were less than him. He believed that it was because... <laughs> and, like, I'm talking nearly, like, direct quote. <laughs> he believed that, like, everybody should be slaves, pretty much. If, if you're weaker than him, you should be slaved. You, sh you should be enslaved. Like... And it was in, in, like, a very patriarchal way as well. Like, he believed that him and, like, the patrician class of white southerners, like, those were the guys who were meant to rule the world. They were, like, preordained by God to, um, have jurisdiction over everything, right? <laughs> and, and... Everybody else, especially those, those, those working northerners, and all like black people and women, uh, children as well. They should be enslaved for their own protection. No labor should be paid. Another another argument he used in defense of that was like, because <laughs> um, he knew that like. With the whole, like, life, everybody has, everyone is born equal, has the right to, like, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, that kind of stuff. He, like, he was like, no. No, and everybody isn't born equal, right? So, <laughs> so, so therefore there should be certain people who do not have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Which was everyone weaker than him, to him, you know what I mean? On top of that, he also was very anti-capitalism. <laughs> like, one of the first American communists. Like, not that there were very many, like, true American communists. Like, people who, like, really supported that as an economic system. What with the Red Scare and all. <laughs> but, like, that was, like, he was, he was completely for communism. Because he did not think that labor should be a commodity. No one should be paid in his mind. Like, Southern philosophers of the time said to, like, Northern abolitionists that, like, how can you be talking about the stuff that we do down here in the South? You're not down here. You're not on the plantation. Therefore, how can you tell me how my slaves feel, you know? That was a lot of Southern philosophy back then. He took it one step further and said that, um... You know, if if this is true, he's he's just like asserting that this is true. First of all, second, since it's true, how can he, as a you know, as a good Christian man who wants equality, who wants you know equal, he wants everybody to feel all right in the world. You know, he wants everyone to be happy under God. If these if these slaves are happier than the northern workers, by Southern philosophy. How can he, as a good Christian, defend uh, <laughs> the practice of, like, uh, industrialism? Like, those guys there must be unhappy. And the reason is, isn't is because they're, like, underpaid and overworked. It's because they're, like, paid at all. They shouldn't be paid. They should be forced to work because 
those who work are the ones who are supposed to. If you're to be working, then that was that was the role that God assigned you. <laughs> so you should be happier not being paid. You have a very there's like a natural relationship between a master and his slaves. And that's that's how the world should work to him. <laughs> this guy was completely bonkers. He was completely nuts. He's completely nuts, and and I, I that had that, that was probably the most interesting time I've had like researching for and like writing a paper, just because like you hear all the time in U.S. history like being a black person in America, I've heard enough of U.S. history to be like, yeah, we were slaves and that's how it was, everything sucked. I've read stuff like very few, the very few accounts that exist, but like, I've read like, this is the diary of a slave this is something a slave wrote I very rarely get to hear from like slave masters how they could like morally defend the institution and then like, I see this guy, and he's straight up bonkers, and it's so interesting to see so anyway um, thank you all for watching this episode I uh Hope you all have a very nice time. Uh, I think I'm going to call the session to a close here. So, everyone have a very nice day. Again, thanks for watching. Maybe leave me a like if you enjoyed. Bye bye.